by doing a demo and walkthrough of Topic Mapper. I'll go through how to create a new topic in the new multi-platform interface, and I'll also go over a topic that we've created. So I'm going to share my screen and please let me know if it doesn't share. Can everybody see Topic Mapper? Yes. Great, good to know. So before we get started, I'm going to point out again the difference between Topic Mapper and Explorer. Explorer really digs into the parameters of attention, influence, and newsmakers or entities. Topic Mapper is more robust than Explorer, so it includes those attention, influence, and entities pieces, but it also includes an influence parameter. So you're able to look at hyperlinking patterns or media inlinks, but we also incorporate more data from other platforms, especially in this new multi-platform version. So you're able to look at parameters such as Facebook shares or how often a link is shared on a certain subreddit. Or for instance, you can start incorporating data from a CSV file that you add into the topic. And one of the key differences between Topic Mapper and Explorer is that when you run a topic, you have the option to spider from your original query and the original set of sources you're looking at to other sources that match that query through hyperlinking patterns. So if you're looking to possibly expand your data set or to incorporate more social media information or to get insight on multi-platform interactions and say how a source might travel from Reddit to Twitter to Facebook, this new version of Topic Mapper is really well suited for that. So to get started, I'm going to actually talk us through how to create a new topic in this interface, and then I'm going to take us over to a topic to explore in more detail. And so the first thing you want to do is get to this particular URL on Topic Mapper, and I'm going to pop that into the chat so that anyone who wants to look at it and follow along can do so. And you'll see that when you're on the topics page, if you've made topics previously, then you'll see those running through your main page. You can also click this button to create a new topic, which was which is what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to name this one sourdough test because our topic that we're going to explore is about sourdough bread. As I'm sure many of you have heard during the court, the COVID-19 outbreak, especially as people were told to self isolate and quarantine and stay at home, many, many people realized that they wanted to stress bake. And as they stress baked, they basically wiped out the United States' entire supply of yeast. And if you don't have yeast, obviously the question comes up, how do you make bread? So there was a period of time as quarantine started that a lot of people got into creating sourdough bread and learning how to bake sourdough. So this topic is really drilling into that early period of March and April when people were starting to think, oh my gosh, I need to learn how to make sourdough bread so that I can stress bake my bread without yeast. And so I'm just going to put in some filler text here for a topic description. I would recommend, you know, making your description more detailed if it's not just a test topic because this is helpful referential information for you later. And I'm going to set my dates to be February 1st to, yeah, I guess June 1st is a good one for this test. You'll see that there's an advanced settings button where you can adjust the amount of spidering that happens in your topic. Right now, I'm going to keep it on the default of 15 rounds of spidering, but there are reasons why you might choose more or less spidering. If, for instance, you're really interested in topic data from one particular country and you don't want to branch out to another country, then you might want to keep your spidering rounds lower because if you're looking at, say, Indian media where there's not a lot of hyperlinking practices, if you do 15 rounds of spidering, then you might suddenly wind up in the United States because the one link that we find is linking to the New York Times. If you're in a community where there is a lot of spidering, such as the, or there is a lot of hyperlinking, such as the United States, then 15 rounds of spidering might mean that you find more sourdough recipes and mentions on blogs and websites that aren't necessarily in, say, a mainstream national media collection. So I'm going to click create, and there's going to be a tiny little pause here. Great. 
So we see a screen that says, yay, we created your topic. That's super exciting. And now you're going to get to a screen that tells you, you know, this is a new topic and now you have to set up your platforms. So the platform options that you see are news on the open web, which is really, really what you can create in a topic already. And this is, you know, going back to that idea of we're creating a topic against a certain source set of sources with this certain query and in this time frame. So this is required for every multi platform topic that you build and that's what we're going to dig into in a minute. You also have the option to at, include links from uploaded content by a CSV upload. So for instance, if you want to find links shared in content that you upload in a CSV file, then this is a feature that you can add into your multi-platform topic. You can search for news and search engine results, and you can also look at links submitted to Reddit via PushShift. PushShift is a really great Reddit database compiled by Jason Baumgartner, and this is where we're getting the data from there. So to get us started here, I am going, oh, and you, we do have an admin only integration with Crimson Hexagon. So if you have access to Crimson Hexagon and you want to incorporate some Twitter data into your topic, then you can talk to us about incorporating, you know, a Crimson Hexagon monitor that you might have run on the side. Now I'm going to go into our news on the open web topic and help us build it out there to begin with. The first thing I'm going to do is click add. And then we will get to a place where we can type in our query. So this is again really resemblant of our old topic interface. And the first thing I'm going to do is type in the word sourdough. And you know, people on the internet don't necessarily have the best spelling most of the time. So I'm also going to do sour space dough in quotation marks just to make sure I'm catching both ways of talking about it. And then I'm going to say, you know, I'm really interested in the US national, US state and local and top online news collections from the last couple of years, which is basically, you know, a good standard set of US media sources. So I'll click OK there. And then I can click this preview button to get an idea of what this data is going to look like for my topic. So this will take a second to load, but it looks like I've got about, you know, 8,700 stories with this type of attention over time. And you'll see, you know, we've got some really interesting peaks in mid-February and also in March, in mid-April. So those are interesting and we might be able to dig into them. I can look over my top words in the word cloud to make sure that my search is returning what I want it to. I'm definitely seeing a lot of food and bread related words in the word cloud, so this looks right to me. And then I see some sample content that's also taking me through what I'm looking for. And I'm seeing some interesting, you know, stuff about the San Francisco 49ers, you know, this might be noise. So, you know, assuming it is because this is a test topic, I'm actually going to go back up to my query put parentheses around these two things. And I'm going to address this by saying not 49ers. Okay, so I'm going to hit preview again. And let's see how this changes what I'm going to get. Okay, so we've gone down by about like 140 stories, still seeing the same two peaks. And the word cloud again looks very food related. So I'm going to look at these sample stories. And you know, it looks like these are much more about bread and cooking and not about the 49ers, which is exactly what I was going for. So I'm going to click next. And this is going to take us to a place to validate content. So this is really, you know, a double check before you create the process. Is there anything that's creating that's adding noise to your topic? Is there anything that you need to take out of this or anything that you need to adjust before you go through and create your topic? So in this case, I'm just going to say yes to everything because this is a test. But in the event that you know you're actually running a real project here, you would want to go through this a bit more methodically and really think about do these match what I'm looking for? Are these sample stories returning the content that I want? Okay, so all of these stories match our topic, or that's what we're telling ourselves right now for the purpose of the test. So I'm going to hit review and confirm. And I'm going to say, well, okay, this seems to be a bug because I've just said everything is relevant. So I'm going to hit ignore and continue. 
And now I'm going to click save because essentially what I'm doing is saving my new platform into the multi platform topic that I'm creating. So I'm going to hit save. And this will take a second. Great, that worked. So now we see something that's asking me to generate a version. And at that point, you're probably asking yourselves, what on earth is a version? Versions are essentially a way of documenting changes that you make in your topic over time. So this is really helpful, you know, if you're doing academic research and you want to track changes in your methodology over time. This is really helpful, for, you know, if you like make a change in version two and you're like, oh, I didn't actually want that, you can click back to the data set that you had in version one. Every time you add a platform to a multi-platform topic, you're essentially creating a new version. So right now, as I add in my open web information, I'm creating version one. If I was to go in and do this same process for the push shift data related to Reddit, I would be creating version two. So I'm going to, you know, so I can click at this point, generate new version. I can also go in and add a new platform. Since, you know, we're doing a demo right now, I'm going to take us through the Reddit one as well and click add. So what I'm going to do is specify a query and I'm going to do the same query as we used before for the open web. So sourdough or sourdough with spaces and then not 49ers. And then I'm going to hit preview. Okay, so this is telling me that I've not really got a lot of matching content, which, you know, kind of sad, but I'm going to just try another version of this, okay? I think his, uh, his syntax is different, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. So for the sake of simplicity, yeah. I'm just going to say sourdough. But that little link that says learn more and see if you want to learn, this is one problem. Each platform has different query syntax, right? So yeah. as you start to do multiple platform things, you end up having to write your own query for each one and learn the syntax. So each one has slightly different syntax. I think you're right that we can do a simple one for here. Um, but uh, as you think about this, you have to think about like the Google one uses the Google search syntax. Media Cloud uses our syntax, which has a little link, but that's definitely a wrinkle. Yeah, so I'm just gonna do sourdough for the sake of this demo, but now I'm like, okay, I've got 22,000 stories. This is really exciting. So we're seeing a really interesting hump in coverage between March and May of this year, which is you know the time that everyone's been staying inside thinking about how much they have to stress bake. And now I'm gonna look at my sample content again, and I'm seeing, you know, there's this subreddit called sourdough. There's a subreddit called Reddit, read it in the kitchen. All of this seems pretty relevant to what I'm looking for. So I'm going to click next and we get to a validate content page. Again, just for sake of time, I'm going to go through and say, yes, everything is relevant. But if you were doing a real project, I would definitely recommend going through this methodically and making sure that the stories match. This is a good place that you can work to catch noise or anything that doesn't make sense or doesn't fit. So I hit review and confirm and this low relevance thing popped up again, which I'm going to ignore because everything is high relevance. So I'm going to click ignore and continue. And now, you know, I'm confirming the addition of this platform to my topic. So I'm going to click save. And now we've got a version summary that's saying we've got two platforms, links submitted to Reddit and news on the open web. And I'm going to click generate new version. So now my topic has started generating and we can see that, you know, this is version one, it's in progress, it's going to happen. You're going to get an email when your topics finish running and based on topic size, running a topic can take anywhere from like one day to potentially a week in a case where it's really slow. Something I'll point out right now is that a lot of people are interested in using Media Cloud to research COVID-19 for very obvious reasons. And because of that, our system has been running a little slower than usual. 
So if you know you realize that I don't have the world's biggest topic, but it's taken me three days, that's not necessarily the end of the world. You can always email us to check in on the status of the topic, and we can you know check in on it. But it might take a little longer than usual at the moment. So I'm going to actually click over to a finished sourdough topic so that we have some data to look at and take you over to this topic that our colleague Dennis Jen created. He actually wrote a blog post on the Media Cloud website about his findings related to sourdough. So if you're interested in that and a really beautiful loaf of bread at the bottom of that blog post, I would highly recommend taking a look. And the first thing you'll see is that this topic mapper interface resembles Explorer, but is not exactly the same. And that's for a few different reasons. The first thing you'll see at the top is this ability to view different time spans more quickly. So, you know, you can start looking at monthly slices or weekly slices if that's what you're interested in. You'll also see this high level summary of the total number of stories in your topic, the media sources that those stories are coming from the number of links in those stories and the number of media links in those stories. So this is all really helpful information to help you understand, you know, where is my topic coming from? What type of data do I have in my topic? If you know you were looking at a media ecosystem that doesn't hyperlink very much, you might see story links and media links both, you know, closer to zero, which tells you something about the media ecosystem and maybe helps you understand how you should evaluate influence based on Facebook shares or another social media metric instead of media in links. The next part we get to is these tabs for influence, attention, language, entities, and stats. And, and you'll also see an export feature. So the export feature is, you know, you click a button and you're able to get a quick CSV of the data in this topic. The stats feature is going to give you an overview of the parameters of your search. So I see a subtopic story count because, you know, I've added Reddit to this pre-made topic. And I also see a summary of my version. So I've got, you know, 15 rounds of spidering for stories between November 2019 and April 2020. I have the open web Google search engine results and links submitted to Reddit. And I have one subtopic for my URL sharing on Reddit. The next thing you'll see are tabs for entities, language, and attention. The entities tab is very similar to the entities tab that you see in Explorer. So it's really taking you through who are the top people who are being talked about in a given topic. You'll also see top organizations. So who are the top organizations being mentioned when looking for the information about our sourdough topic? And you'll see geographic attention. So as it turns out, sourdough is a pretty globally discussed topic at the moment. It's being talked about in a lot of different places, including some that I might not have expected. So, you know, that's really it an interesting takeaway. The next tab we see is language, which again is really similar to Explorer. You'll see a word cloud of the top words that match this topic. You'll see a word space model. This really showing you how words are used within the stories that are part of this topic. And you'll see the top five themes for this story run against that same New York Times annotated corpus. Something that's worth mentioning here is the topic mapper is really good about giving you words in context. So if I go up to this word cloud and I click on the word flower, I'm going to get the number of stories that mention the word flower. I'm going to get the top words related to flower. And then I get this model of how flower is being talked about in this given situation. And so, you know, you see types of flour, you see wheat flour, all purpose, you see bread flour, but you can also click over to the word bread to understand what type of bread. People are talking a lot about strong white bread flour. If I click the and after flour, I can understand that people are saying flour and water, which again are key ingredients to making bread. And then I'll see sample stories related to the word flour specifically. So this word in context model is a really helpful way to understand how certain words are being used within the context of the topic that you're looking at. And this is a good way to understand how certain topics are being framed to understand, you know, if there's a surprising word in your word cloud, where is it coming from? What's the background of this word? It's a good way to find things that you might not have noticed otherwise. 
the attention tab is really comparable to explore and it helps you analyze attention to a topic over time to understand how that topic is covered. So you'll see the number of stories that are collected and you'll also see a graph of attention over time. You have the option to download your attention data. So basically how many stories were published per day so that you can do further analysis on it or, you know, build your own chart should you want to do so. And the tab where I want to spend a little bit of time is the influence tab because that doesn't really match up with what you saw in Explorer. So this influence tab is going to show you a couple sections. One is top stories and the other one is top media. And both of these are really looking at what are the most influential stories or sources for a given topic. So you can filter top stories and top sources in two different ways, by media and links or by Facebook shares. You'll see that Instagram is a pretty popular aggregate just because people share a lot of Instagram. But instead of looking just at Facebook shares, maybe I'll click over to media and links instead. And again, we're seeing, okay, Instagram's really popular, but this website Baking Banter is also quite popular by media and links we'll see that, you know, this recipe for cheesy Brussels sprouts au gratin is very popular as well. And, you know, we can follow this the whole way down to figure out like, what are the types of things that are being talked about in the most influential way as thought about by media in links. If I click Facebook shares, this is going to change a little bit. So in addition to the Instagram up at the top, we're now seeing a New Yorker article about gluten. We're seeing an article about how to make a sourdough starter. And you'll notice that there's a change in the way that influence is assessed. When you're looking at influence by Facebook shares, it's thinking more about methods and processes right now. And if you look at influence by media and links, it was a lot more about recipes. So that's an interesting takeaway that you can build off of to find something more. If I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a button for download options so that you can download the top stories. And something that is important to remember, of course, is that we can't give you the text of the stories because we, of course, can't do that for legal reasons, but we will give you the URLs to the stories so you can click through and do further research that way. And then top media is looking again at what are influential pieces within this topic, but instead of looking at a story level, we're starting to look at a source level. So again, Instagram's up at the top because of the high share count and the high in link count, given, you know, this is a platform. We see YouTube right after that. But if I search by media in links, then after that, I see, you know, baking banter. I see the clever carrot, the perfect loaf. So all of these sort of very cooking and recipe oriented sites. If I click over to look at this by Facebook shares, then I'm seeing the New Yorker Nurse Kitchen. I'm seeing The Guardian, which wasn't popping up as a top story on its own, but is apparently a pretty influential source. I'm seeing Baking Banter, Delish, The New York Times. So the types of sources that we're getting if you're thinking about influential Facebook shares versus media and links is again changing overall. Now I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to click on this filter bar. The filter bar works in a couple different ways. You can run a story search filter using Boolean syntax. So let's say I'm really interested in flower. I'm going to type in the word flower and now my search results have been filtered to show, okay, this is something that matches the topic, but these are also stories that mention the word flower. So now if I look at my top stories, I'm seeing things that specifically mention flower. And of course, my media and links show a different type of story being more influential than my Facebook shares. But everything slightly shifted because, you know, I've run this search for a specific term on top of my topic. Now I'm looking at about 5,000 stories instead of 12,000. So this is a good way to delve into how flour is specifically how flour is specifically talked about in the context of sourdough as opposed to just sourdough itself. Now let's say that I'm like, oh, this is super interesting, but I want to be able to compare flour to something else, or I want to be able to get more detail of what's going on here. I can close out of this subtopic and or I can close out of this story search filter and I can actually go to a subtopic. 
So by default, you're going to have a subtopic for the URL sharing behavior that we've tracked from Reddit because we added that Reddit platform to our search earlier. So we'll see that we got 336 stories from Reddit. They came from 123 media sources and there were 95 media links. Okay, this is pretty interesting. So you'll see that your influence parameters have now changed. We're going to tell you how many Reddit posts match those stories. And when you see these things for authors and channels, channels is actually going to translate to um, subreddits. And when you think about authors, this is the number of unique users that posted this link to the platform. If you're ever confused about the change in syntax between platform to platform, I would highly recommend clicking these little question marks to get an idea of what's happening there. And if I filter to see what are the things that have been posted most on Reddit, you'll see that you've got this article about sourdough starter, something about textile science engineering, something about extra tangy sourdough bread. So these are all interesting things to pull away from here. The attention, language, and entities tabs are going to be pretty similar to what you were looking at before. So you're going to get your attention graph, but you're also going to get a filtered story count. So this is showing us how many stories we're finding in our Reddit topic versus how many we had in our overall topic. Now, the next question that you might be having is, okay, it's great that subtopics are creating certain topics by platform by default, but what if you wanna create a subtopic of your own? What you're gonna to wanna to do is click into versions and you'll remember that you're getting a new version for every platform that you're adding more or less. But if you click at create a new version, you're gonna see a few different options. You can change the dates and spidering for your topic. So for instance, let's say I set a topic for the first three months of 2020, and now that we're in June, I want to expand that. I can expand my date range. Let's say I originally created a topic with five rounds of spidering, and now I wanna to go to 15. This would be the place to do that. One thing to keep in mind is that you can always make a topic bigger, but you can't make a topic smaller. So if you start with a topic that's six months and you want to make it three, that's not really the way to go. So I would always recommend starting small and then expanding. The other thing you can do is add or modify platforms, which follows that same process that we talked about when we were creating a topic at the beginning. And the last thing you can do is add or modify subtopics. So if you click into this, you're going to see again some different options you'll see the subtopic that you already have which you know we have one for reddit and i'm going to click add a new subtopic so now you see a few different techniques that are available to you you've got the option to do a search by keywords so if i want a subtopic specific to flour or specific to bread flour this is where i would make it if I want to do a search by U.S. audience partisanship, taking advantage of those five partisanship collections that came out of the election research in 2016, that's the subtopic I would pick. If I want to compare coverage of different countries within my topic, I could follow through with the top country subtopic. And if I want to compare coverage of different themes within a topic, as labeled by the New York Times Annotated Corpus, then you could go into the top theme subtopic. If you're interested in comparing coverage of a topic by different types of media, so for instance, broadcast or online or digital or print data, you would click the media type subtopic. For our purposes right now, I'm just going to click through with the search keyword one. And I'm going to type in the word flower because, you know, I've decided this is interesting to me. So I click search. And we're going to wait for the preview to show up. So it's like, okay, I have 12,000 stories in my topic. And when I search for flower, I have 5,000. This matches up with the filter I've run earlier. So I have no reason to think that this is wrong. I'm going to scroll through my sample stories. And now I'm going to click next. So I'm going to name my flower subtopic flower subtopic. It's the auto description is stories containing flower, which works great for me. And I have the option of creating a set of subtopics. So I'm going to call this a keyword based set of subtopics. And I'm going to click next. And I'm going to see confirmation that, you know, this is what I've done in my subtopic. And I'm going to click save and add more.
Great. So my subtopic has been made and I've essentially created an action that's going to take me from version one to version two. So if I'm ready to run this subtopic, I will click generate new version and I would be ready to go. That new version would be running and then I would, you know, just wait for the email saying that that version is done. I'm seeing a question in the chat that says in the attention mode, what is the easiest way to overlay text on the map? And to respond to that, I'm going to actually just click through to summary because I don't need to save these changes right now. And I'm going to click attention again. What I would actually do in this sort of situation is I would download my CSV file of story counts by day and I would create a new attention graph in Excel and I would actually annotate points on top of that. It wouldn't be something that you could do in the topic itself on Media Cloud. I'm also seeing a question that says, if you have a topic that's been running for quite some time, how can you stop it? The best way to stop a topic in that particular situation is to email support at mediacloud.org. And when you do so, explain, you know, hey, my topic's been running for like three months and I would like it to stop. Then if you include the number of your topic, so this number in the URL, then we can help you stop it. Otherwise, you can also just copy and paste the whole topic URL and we can go in and stop the topic for you. The URL is also sort of that linchpin that we need if you email us and say, hey, I have this topic, I'm really interested in the data, but the topic hasn't finished running or it ran into an error, can you look into it? If you just email us the topic URL, we can look into that for you as well. But that is a quick overview of the multi-platform topic interface.